it started as a distant rally cry in December. After injuries, expectations, and miracles. Robinson at the buzzer! Stanford stays on feet! Sonic puts up a three. Good! The game is over! Cardinals undefeated! This motivational spark caught fire. Stanford's quest for perfection continues. Against Red Hot Washington, next. For the first time in history, Washington students camped out prior to a basketball game. The Huskies are on a stunning run toward postseason play. Romerville is a hit, and second-year coach Lorenzo Romar is the magician. And look who showed up to hand out the donuts earlier today. Whoa. And inside, it is standing room for Washington's biggest game ever. As we walk into the ABC's NCAA basketball, presented by Seattle, the Pac-10 standing highlight, unbeaten Stanford and on rushing Washington. Remember this about Stanford. Since this conference expanded in 1978-79, no team has ever gone 18-0, and, and that is Stanford's goal here today. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger. A pleasure to have you along, and I'm joined by my partner, Jimmy Dykes. I'm sure he's going to love basketball in the Northwest. <laughs> Let's start out talking about this Stanford team coming off another miracle now, trying to keep their dream alive for an unbeaten regular season. There's something magical about this Stanford club right now. Not only are they trying to write their names in the Pac-10 record book, they could very well be playing their way into the number one seed overall in that 65-team field. I don't buy into the fact right now if you're Stanford, you lose a ball game, you get the pressure off of you, you keep that momentum train going right down the track. Now on the other side, Jimmy, Washington started out at Pac-10 play, 0-5. They won 11-12. They're dreaming of an NCAA. It, is it a pipe dream or is it for real? Well, I think it's for real, but they got a lot of work to do. I think their margin for error right now is zero. They don't have enough quality wins over top 100 opponents. Think about this. Their RPI going into today's ball game is 90. The highest at-large RPI ever given out, team had a 74. They've got a lot of work left to do. Jimmy, it's going to be electric in this building here today. And right now, let's send you to the studio. John Saunders and Digger Phelps. Brent, thanks a lot. As usual, fired up for a big game. Number one, Stanford, as they showed you, survived a huge scare against Washington State. This crowd is jacked up. Even though we have conceded a number one seed in the tournament to Stanford, they lose here, they lose in the tournament. Who knows, right? You never know. And you look at Washington with what they're trying to do. Washington has a Robin. We talk about Nick Robinson, who made the big shot for Stanford against Arizona at home, but it was the other guy, Nate Robinson, who had the big game against Arizona when he threw in 31. That's who they've got to stop in this game. So if Stanford is the number one seed and Duke is the number one seed and St. Joe's is the number one seed, Mississippi State out of the SEC, they could hope so, although they were losing to Alabama throughout most of the game. But the game winner is here in the air. And Mississippi State goes on to get the victory in overtime. They're going to challenge Kentucky now to see if they can become a number one seed by winning the SEC Conference Tournament next, next week. Oklahoma State thinking the same thing. They're the number one seed in the Big 12 Tournament. They took care of business with Texas. The question is, if they meet Texas, can you beat a team three times in one year? If they do, then they may get that number one seed. Pittsburgh will be the number one seed in the Big East. They've got to beat, I think, UConn in the championship because that's what it's going to come down to. Those two teams are the best in the Big East. All right, so again, there's a lot of games to be played. We can see three of those number ones. But who knows? Stanford has to get past Washington today. Right now, let's return to Brent and Jimmy. John, thank you very much. As we get ready for the Stanford showdown against Washington. And when you think about the Stanford Cardinals, you can't look past their two miracle finishes that they have already turned in. And now they try to become the first conference team to go 18-0 since the conference expanded. Josh Childress, one of their main athletes, stretching, getting loose. The Husky players coming out now. 
just imagine the excitement that they're experiencing here at the doghouse. The students there in the background. The color today is definitely Husky purple. Mike Jensen, he of the blonde hair, jumps center, and the Huskies control it. Now, this is a team, Jimmy, of very good athletes. They're very quick. Well, they can put a lot of points on the board. They average 82 points a ball game in Pac-10 play. Stanford only gives up 61. A game of momentum, a game of tempo and speed. Jensen pump fakes on a little. Cut off baseline, got to go back outside. Jensen fires the three ball off iron. Defensive rebound cleared by Stanford. Washington the club not great on the board. Stanford comes in, the best rebounding team in the Pac-10. Little out high, going to go low now to Robinson. Robinson maneuvers, bad pass. And Childress has got it back, and it's knocked out of bounds. It goes over to the Huskies. Let's check in on our Toyota starting lineup now. Childress, Hernandez, Little, Robinson, and Lodick, a familiar starting five for Coach Montgomery. I think Stanford really fights you hard in the two-point area of the floor. They uh, attack dribble drives. Terrific help defensive club. Here's Allen, the only senior on the team, drawing a start today for Romar. Jones, good athlete from California, draws the game's first foul. Now the Washington lineup, and again, as we have told you, Allen, number 20, he was a starter until this season, and he has been replaced by the electric Nate Robinson, who will start this game. In fact, he's standing up. You wouldn't know it. He's only 5'9", but folks, he is over there in front of the Washington bench. Nate Robinson standing up. Romar, one-time assistant coach of Jim Herrick's down at UCLA when they won a national championship. He has done a tremendous job in just two years getting the Huskies' fortunes turned around after a tough start. 0-5, they've broken back 10 play. Now they have wrapped up second place regardless of what happens here. They'll be the number two seed in next week's Pac-10 tournament down in Los Angeles. And I think they've done it on the defensive end of the floor. January was not a great defensive month for them, but they have turned it around in February and March. Childers at the side of the glass that time. Ball goes back to the Huskies who lead it on the strength of the free throw by Jones. Brent, what concerns you about covering Washington, they're a versatile team offensively. The one through five, interchangeable, and they can really attack that rim. Jimmy, what's interesting now is in their last two trips, they have battled their way to the free throw line. That's usually indicative of a very aggressive team. Well, it's also something that Stanford doesn't uh, always see go against them. Stanford averages 17 points a game from the free throw strike. Their opponents only get 11. Stanford normally a club, Brent, that defends well without fouling. Stan Reynolds is our lead referee. Huskies go up by two. Chris Rastatter and Tom Wood will work alongside here. Stanford came in favored by a couple of field goals, and the underdog strikes first. Pressure after the made free throw. Conroy, the point guard, picks up Hernandez, and he'll easily come across the timeline. There are better point guards in the country. Goes back tougher. door. Yes. Got it. That's that mental toughness that Hernandez can throw at you. Brings his club to a 1-4. He will always get his club in the proper set. And Roy, in low now to Jensen. Comes up firing off the glass. Hernandez will set the table. And Robinson working low now for the Cardinals. High screen from Little. Robinson steps out, pump fake your cut, shoulders down the baseline. Shoot it over to Hernandez. Easy put back by Little, nobody on that side, Jimmy. Now on film, Washington, they are ball watchers when this shot is taken. They don't box off Will. Conroy on the drive, not there. Little again yanking the rebound away. Robinson's hand. They've turned it over again to Washington. One way to fight that pressure of Washington is come to a 1-4 high set. Childress releases a terrific job of passing that basketball by Hernandez. You have to have some pressure releases against the athletes of Washington. Roy wants Jones in the corner. They want to go low. Jensen. Jensen comes up shooting again. That's two field goals in a row. 
You know, they don't really have a true low post presence, so any points they get off that low block, I think it's extra in, in uh, Lorenzo Romar's mind. Jensen was a very highly recruited youngster out here at Washington State. Power forward, doesn't do a job on Little, lets him get in behind him that time. They go over the top. That's their other pressure release. Talked about it yesterday in practice. They just throw over the top because they're 6'11 being guarded by 6'8. Reach in is Robinson. That's his second foul of the game. Again, Washington's a club that the, if they do score on the post, they usually dive to the post and they have to operate quickly. The height and the power favors Stanford in this ball game. Washington has to offset it with quickness. Robinson sits with two personals. Matt Harris at 6'10", a sophomore from Page, Arizona. And here is the electric one. Nate the Great, Nate Robinson from Rainier Beach High School. And that team tonight will go for its third consecutive state high school championship over the Tacoma Dome. Here he is, folks. He can do it all. Talk about a jumper. Wouldn't stay down for him. And again, it's Little who is controlling the glass. That's five rebounds for Little in the early going. Offensive foul on Childress. Childress fouled out late in the Washington State game on Thursday night. And he picks up this personal foul. That's his second. His instincts on the catch to put the ball in the deck and attack the rim. Great job of bringing the scouting report off the board to the floor by Bobby Jones. Montgomery unhappy. He goes all the way to the baseline to stare across the court at the official who made that second foul call on Childress. Roy to the paint, the fade away. No, and it's Childress yanking it down with that long reach. And now the whistle goes against the Huskies. It is on Robinson for reaching in. There's the turnover story, Jimmy. Uncharacteristic of Stanford because I think they're one of the better passing ball clubs as a group that you'll find in the country. Montgomery was briefly warned about watching it over there. The official went all the way to the other side of the court. He's 26 and 0 and he coaches like he's 15 and 15. Fierce competitor. Little in behind Jensen again. They're trying to front the bigger man. Lottick pump fake baseline. Got it. First shot since the miracle trade the other night in Pullman. Long pass out of bounds. Back to Stanford. So when we come back, we'll talk about the tournament resume. Does Montgomery want to go unbeaten? You bet he does. Touch is big, life-sized. Stanford enjoying his first lead of the day, 8-7. Now Mike Montgomery, 18th year. Is he fired up? You bet he is here, Jimmy, as we take a look at the tournament resume for the Cardinal. And it's just a question of what Jimmy told you. How high can they wind up here? Well, they could be the number one seed overall if they run this thing uh, completely down the track like they're doing right now. Great win against Gonzaga, Arizona twice. I know what their RPI is, but I also know what my CSI says, Common Sense Index. They have no glaring weakness. Depth can pass that ball, defend, rebound, and can win on the neutral floor. Harris comes to the high post. Monik hits Hernandez, coming baseline on the drive, and one. Very efficient game out of Chris Hernandez, Brent. Only takes six shots a game, but backs it up with five assists. A kid that uh, takes what the defense gives him, and as I said earlier, there might be better point guards in the country. There are not tougher point guards. Well, Lou Olson would certainly second that to me. He thinks Sir Hernandez is the most valuable player on this Stanford run, and the Stanford team, and their run right now is 7-0 against Washington. He's almost like a good graduate assistant coach in a uniform. Robinson trying to get something going, and Lodic won't let him free. Conray penetrates and scores. Pretty simple game plan for Washington. In a partner, attack that rim off the bounce. A foul on the press. Robinson and Jones were back there. Now, when we talk about Washington, yes, it is a very impressive run down the stretch. But as Jimmy Dykes has told you, that strength of schedule is not very good, and the RPI stands at 90. If you know what they'll tell you, and rightfully so, Arizona in everyone's mind is a lock for the tournament. They've beaten Arizona twice. That was the second personal on Jones, so Simmons is off the bench, along with Rollins. Rollins is 6'7". 
Youngster wearing number four for Washington. Hernandez works the back door, can't kiss it in. Headman is Robinson, he's cut off, of jumping off the glass. Game is deadlocked and Robinson goes now up against Hernandez for a time as he comes across that timeline. Harris puts it down, pull up Jay, battle rebound, and Little again. That's six rebounds here today already for Little. Washington on the drive. It'll fall. Fred Washington out of Los Angeles, Bishop Montgomery High School. Stanford shoots almost 50% from the field. You cannot let them second possession you on offensive boards. Simmons gives it down to Jensen. Good outside range. Good face up power forward. Then you have a nice skill set for a guy his size. Can step out and stretch it. Can put it on the floor. Can pass the ball. being hounded by Simmons, puts it down, goes to work and gives it up, now to Harris, left-handed drives, good. Harris comes with a purpose. Guy comes in 16 minutes a game and gets a lot done. Harris yanks it away. Hernandez, to the left side of the attack for the Cardinal, dribbles it to the right. Washington, the left-hander. Off iron, Little has it knocked away, tries to save it, and winds up on Washington's hands. And traveling is called. I thought he got rid of it in time, Jimmy. I don't agree with that call. Well, Stanley Reynolds is catching it from both ends of the floor now. Comes down, let it go. That's not a travel. That is not a travel. I know it'll be a special atmosphere. Duke, North Carolina tonight on ESPN. This will almost equal it. Stanford lead by a field goal. Conroy's all over Lonick. Haas running the point now for Stanford off the bench. Goes to Washington again. Yanked away, Hetman is Jensen to Cardin, back on defense as they normally are. Very tough to get that fast break rolling. Robinson puts it down, kick to the outside, he's a good three shooter. Simmons on Robinson's penetration and kick it out. This game is starting out as good as advertised. Ah, is the backup point. Jensen deflects. He's the head man. Here he comes. Yes. Jensen forced the turnover. Got down the floor ahead of the defense. And the Huskies, the underdog, out by three. Washington being hounded. It goes over to Washington. Simmons on top of him. And right now, it is Romar's defense. That has turned it around here, Jimmy. Terrific job of finding a shooter. The seams are lined up. Bingo. Pac-10 basketball presented by Cialis. Mike Jensen takes his first break. He was a point a minute man, Jimmy. Pretty good first eight minutes for Mike Jensen. He's got eight points. He usually averages seven. A guy that can really drift off of drives and spot up and stretch you defensively. You expect Washington to be playing with that desperate energy. Jensen right now is playing with that desperate energy. His career high is 16. He's halfway there already. Stanford goes zone, Brent. Robinson fires short. Washington has it rejected underneath. Simmons, who was very active against Cal on Thursday night, comes back with the loose ball, and the underdog builds a five-point advantage. All of the 50-50 plays in this ballgame so far have gone to the team in gold. They're quicker. Traveling off 
it goes. Well, a reminder now, NBA comes to ABC tomorrow. There's your Sunday doubleheader. The battle for Texas, Mavericks and Rockets will start it off. Then it's the Nets going against the Los Angeles Lakers. The big story there, Kobe Bryant's injured shoulder will sideline him for four weeks. It is the third time that I can remember this season, and it goes back to a playoff dunk last year when I felt he originally injured that shoulder. So the Lakers will be without Kobe tomorrow, and the Nets don't know about Jason Kidd in that one. Now for Washington, Rollins penetrates. And for Washington, let one get away from him, Kobe, that time. They're going to make those easy ones against Stanford because they're far and few between. Arias flips it over now to Grunfeld. Grunfeld had that huge four-point play against Washington State. Lottick wanted the shot. He was covered up beautifully by Conroy. Grunfeld will come with a dribble. Arias steps out. Long rebound. Grunfeld's got it. Lottick will come fire. Missed the three that time. Got the rebound himself. Kicks it to Luna. Washington is so concerned with the transition basket, they didn't box off, and Lodick made him play. Cannot run till you secure the ball. Washington even going with its big lineup right now with Rollins and, and Washington. Still works in progress for Coach Romar, the two big fellas. You gap attack the zone. Stanford on film, that's where they have problems. An offensive foul is against Robinson. I'm talking about cleaning up the misses of Stanford. Lodick with a shot. See, trying to leak out right there by Will Conroy, and Lodick makes him play. This is a club that will put a knot on your head in a hurry on the boards if you don't battle them. Nate Robinson, despite the two personals, replaces Harrius. Hernandez is back on the point. Lodick, little. Grunfeld stays with this starting the lineup. He's hammered. Lottick comes firing. Into Conroy's hands this time. Cut off by Lottick. Goes on the wing. Simmons travel. So far, been tough whistles both ways, Jerry. That was a good call, but it was tough. Well, Washington, when they rip that ball down, they run, don't they? All five guys filled with quickness. And they've got that quick. In low to Little, stolen, good job by Simmons, loose, picked up, Robinson scoops ahead, here's Jones, Jones gives it off now, and Conroy will shoot a pair of free throws. Montgomery again does not agree with that call. Washington knows they're not great in the half court, Brent, so as a result, every time they have even even numbers, they're going to be aggressive in this ball game. Team full of guys in, at any point, all five can get out and finish, can pass in transition. Turnovers becoming a real problem for Stanford early in this ball game. Five team fouls on the Cardinal and four on the Huskies with 9.30 to go in the first half. Jensen checks back in. He had a very productive eight minutes. You're right. That's a guy that uh, wants to run it to 27-0. You know, in the second half of the Washington State game, and I was not there in person, I was watching the Saturday night of the game, I thought he was very calm over there on the sideline. He is not calm here today. He knows that this is going to be a war from beginning to end against a Washington team that cheered that win as loudly as Stanford fans. They wanted an unbeaten Cardinal team back door, and Harrius with an easy layup. That's about three times, Jimmy. They've gone in over the top. Yep. Again, they uh, they understand their personnel well. That is their pressure release in this ball game over the top of UW. Robinson gets a high screen, pick and roll. Jones has to pick it up and battle to Cardinal right away. Cross now. Here comes Conroy. Arias cleans it out. Stanford looking for the lead, trailing it by two. Stripped on the steal. Here comes Robinson. Hernandez is there. Got a teammate. Gave it Simmons leg. Not only are they getting turnovers, they're converting them into points. Little is out. 
for the high pick and roll. Comes free. Run fell on the dribble, picks it up. Stanford to be in a little bit of a hurry on the perimeter. They got the size advantage inside, but they're passing them up too quickly. Into Jensen's hands. The Huskies come on back now. Pick up by Grunfeld at the baseline. Robinson. Fire the three. Yes. Mighty might strikes again. Amidst all these Huskies, you got a poodle who can flat out play. <laughs> he was in the building about two hours prior to tip off, getting some extra shooting in. You don't match his competitive spirit, he'll light you up. Over the top, knocked by Washington and out of bounds. Nate the Great, the son of a football legend here in Seattle. His dad was Jacques Robinson, a great running back. He's making Pops proud. Nate Robinson off the bench with five points. And Nate the Great, we talked about his father, Jacques Robinson, who was a great running back here for the Huskies. He was an MVP of a Rose Bowl and also an Orange Bowl, the only player in history. And folks, he's looking a little bit like a defensive tackle these days. <laughs> there is Jacques. And is he ever proud of little Nate, who's doing the thing out there right now? Nate told me he talked to his father early this morning. I said, what advice did he give you? He said, don't let your team lose. Whatever you have to do, do not let your squad lose. There's an interesting story, Jimmy, about him before the Rose Bowl MVP. He basically was on the hamburger team, and he was playing the part of Marcus Allen. They put him in against USC. He did so well that by the time they got to the Rose Bowl, coaches said, let's go with the big fella. And the rest is history. He wound up being the MVP. And look at that T-shirt. He got Nate going skyward against Arizona. That is 5-9. His head almost up at the rim. And it's been printed on a T-shirt here in Seattle. How many 5-9 guys do you know that are former state record holders in the high hurdles in high school? It's unbelievable with him. Robinson gets it to fall. A nice drive to the left baseline. And now... Stanford within five. The unbeaten and top-ranked team in the nation go into the 2-3 zone here. The bottom guys for Stanford will cover high on the wings. You can attack the short corner off the drive with a pitch. Here's Nate again. Fire this time, but into Roy's hands. Give it now to Simmons, who's out of bounds, and it'll go. I, they're going to say it was knocked out of bounds. So a break for the Huskies now, and Childress... Two personals, replaces Harrius. Harrius goes over to the sideline. Deep to Jensen. Little tries to stay with him. An open Jones. Haven't they been effective off the bounce? Absolutely. And attacking that rim either with a finish or with a pass. Washington 28, Stanford 21. Huskies trying to impress one and all. Trying desperately to get an NCAA bid. They're a long shot in that area, short the line. And here today as an underdog, they're playing their hearts out against the number one team in the nation. Roy, up a curl. That's good. Washington sets a lot of mid-post to high-post screens with their four and five. They're absolutely outstanding at curling off of them. Little with the high pick and roll. Hernandez keeps the dribble. Chilis. And it goes over. With Jimmy Dykes, I'm Brett Musburger. A sold-out doghouse in Seattle. Perhaps the biggest game ever for the Washington Huskies. After losing their first five games in Pac-10 play, they've won 11 of 12, and now they're trying to seal the deal, close out the regular season with a huge upset over Stanford. Against zone or man, Washington, they've done their damage, attacking the rim off the bounce. 
Simmons penetrates against that zone. Wouldn't stay down. Lodic off with the board. Lodic has to pick the dribble up. Robinson's open. Jensen seals off Little. Hernandez forces Simmons to pick it up. Because Washington pushes so hard from defense to offense, Stanford a little less aggressive on the offensive glass right now. Jensen from the perimeter. And out this time. A nine-point Husky lead with four and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Jones defending Childress. Athlete on athlete in that matchup. And loan out a little. Jensen tries to bump it. Kick Lodic loses the handle. Simmons has got it. Foul Lodic. Well, the playoffs in the NHL are less than a month away. So next Saturday, ABC brings you regional action. We're featuring the stars, the Red Wings, Devils at the Flyers, or King Sharks. Good lineup. NHL on ABC next Saturday at noon, right here on the West Coast. Ten turnovers out of the Cardinals so far in this ball game. Very uncharacteristic of a club that, again, can pass that ball as well as anyone in the country. How a young team with only one senior can come together with good coaching, good athletic ability. They've turned it over. There's Romar. Played here at Washington. In fact, the only time that they ever beat a number one ranked team, Romar came off the bench for Washington that day as they beat UCLA and the famed John Wood. Came off the bench and produced, didn't he? 25 minutes, six assists, no turnovers. He told me to points. remind the team of the no turnovers. The exact <laughs> most proud of that. So this up firing. Missed everything that time. Stanford is out of sync. But it's a team that's been under pressure before. In fact, several times. Washington on a 17-6 run. Here in the Pac-10, Washington leading Stanford by nine. And again, a reminder now, 9.30 out here on the Pacific Network. Mavericks, Rockets will get it started. It's an NBA doubleheader on ABC. It'll be followed up by the Nets and Shaquille O'Neal and the Los Angeles Lakers. And in case you have missed the news, Kobe Bryant going to be out for a month. Now, let's check the standings. That battle is so important according to Phil Jackson for that number four spot at least for the Lakers not wanting to concede the home court advantage to Dallas what would be the first round of the playoffs New Jersey of course safely in in a weakened Eastern Conference the bottom three spots wide open and none of those three teams may be over 500 Houston of course has to keep winning also Lakers not only trying to get that fourth spot but they're also trying to get healthy Carl Malone not going to be back for a couple of weeks talk about Kobe being out if they ever get all the pieces on the floor Look out. Back now to Jensen. Here's Conroy for the Huskies back in and out. 325 left here in the first half. In and out. Childress back to rebound. And that now is Grunfeld. Panthers been a little chumpy on the offensive end. I think they need to make UW work defensively. See if they want to defend for the entire possession. Kirchhofer, Joe Kirchhofer on the floor. Hernandez off the drive, got the glass. That was more toughness than talent, wasn't it? It sure was. Very tough. Move. Back to within seven. Allen, Jones, Jensen, Roy Conroy on the floor. Ball's knocked out of bounds with 23. Here comes Nate the Great. So reminding how TGI Friday's halftime report is up. Mississippi State survives another scare. Pittsburgh, Oklahoma State. Have reports on all of that. Gonzaga, possible number one seed. I think that's a real possibility for Mark Few's squad. Up firing the three as Conroy nails it. Here they come. They build a double-digit lead for the first time. Robinson's cut off. Ball is stolen. Jones fouled by Childress. And now for Childress. That's his third foul. 
Stanford completely out of rhythm on the offensive end. Terrific job by Washington. You know, I think they're, they're patient on offense. They're taking what Stanford's given them defensively. Stanford right now trying to force things on the offensive end against a quicker Husky defensive squad right now. Every member of that NCAA committee should get a copy of this videotape. If you tell me right now, right now, that there are 64 teams in the country, or 65 better than Washington, I'll say, go prove it. This team can flat out play. Romar has done a great job with a young team, and you have got to give credit to a basketball team that improves as the course of the season wears on. They are doing a much better job than I saw Arizona do against the Stanford team. Stanford's gonna have to dig deep to come back against these guys. They can do it. They're experienced, they've got talented players, they're very well coached. But folks, it's gonna be all hands on deck here this afternoon. This Washington team is for real right now, and they deserve consideration. And if you talk about the importance of how you played your last 10, it really favors these guys in gold. Can you believe it's out of bounds? Another turnover, Jimmy. Their 12th turnover, and they only averaged 14 on the year. Again, they're impatient on the offensive end. Now, Stanford, and your eyes go immediately to that Oregon game when they were down 15 at the intermission, and they stormed back. That was their toughest comeback of the season. But this one will surpass even that. Washington right now is a better basketball team than Oregon was on that day. This is a very athletic Husky basketball team. If they're going to come back, it'll be off the triggers plays of Hernandez, and he just huddled his teammates up and really lit them up in that last good ball. Stanford lost on its last trip to Seattle. And that was the last season. Lodick misfires the three into Robinson's hands. Here they come again. Now Roy gets to the left. And one. Hold on, it's going to go the other way. Going the other way that time, a first personal foul call. It was close. Talk about the plays that Hernandez can make on you. At both ends of the floor, plays that can get you back into a ball game. Another toughness play out of number 11. It's the only way he can stop the ball. He's not going to block a shot. Got to get those dogs set and take the charge, and he did it. Yeah, I agree with the call. I haven't seen that replay. That was great, great basketball by Hernandez on that play. Jimmy, you're absolutely right at both ends of the floor. Settle down, make Washington guard you for a little bit here. Over the top, they've turned it over again. Cross court. Jensen not looking for the shot. Instead, it is Washington settling down. Roy kick it over to Jensen. Bluffs the three. Comes left baseline. This firing. Into the world with the rebound for Stanford. So Stanford this season, 14 a game, and already they've had 13 turnovers here in the first half. And that is out to get the ball. Coming down, final shot time here in the first half. They've really defended that on-ball screen for Hernandez well. On the drive, Hernandez got it at the buzzer. That's what Stanford can do. And that's the guy right there that can bring you back. He will light up his teammates in the locker room at halftime. Even guys that are superstar-like Childress will respond. Works off of a ball screen up top, really for the first time the entire 20 minutes that Washington doesn't defend it well. You can't second guess this guy on those ball screens, Brim, because he can go either way with either hand, as good as there is in the country at going to his right and his left with equal velocity. At the half, Washington up 10, 35-25. John and Digger now coming up right after this. ABC's NCAA Basketball, presented by Cialis, brought to you by the all-new Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-size. The TGI Friday's Halftime Report is next, after this message and a word from our ABC stations. 
This is the TGI Friday's Halftime Report. Here now, John Saunders and Digger Phelps. Unbeaten Stanford has only trailed five other times at halftime. Of course, they've won all of those, but things don't look good with 25 points in the first half, and this is a good Washington team. Washington playing aggressive defense and 12 turnovers early really hurt Stanford, and you just can't do that when you're on the road. We figure Stanford has that number one seed wrapped up in the West. Of course, if they lose today and then lose in the conference tournament, who knows? Who else might get a number one seed? Mississippi State laying claim as they face Alabama today, but they really struggle. Winston taps in the miss at the buzzer there. The well, Stanford Lions led 15-13 with 12 and a half to go in the first half, and then Washington went on a 22-8 run. They lead it by 10 at the intermission. And uh, Jimmy Dykes, what was the uh, number one uh, sign they were handed out outside? This is it right here. And they've done their part to make it 26-1 and for Stanford, haven't they, in the first 20 minutes? You know what? They played with desperate energy that you would expect a 16-10 and 10 team to play with in March. And uh, Washington right now, the much more aggressive club on both ends of the floor. How impressed are you watching this Washington team? I'm impressed with their quickness and their athletic ability, and they've also been the more patient team, surprisingly, especially in the half-court offense. Terrific outstanding half uh, by Jensen shooting that basketball, stretching Stanford defensively, and just the, uh, the passion and the energy that Washington has played with that really come forth in their transition buckets. I think Stanford has got to take better care of that basketball, be stronger with it, sweep and drive on people, and Rob Little, the center for Stanford, number 42, working inside, Brent, three for three in the first half. He needs more touches. Stanford needs to slow down just a little bit, face up and be strong and get the big fella involved. There we see the first half stats. Field goal shooting. Washington with 48% to Stanford's 46. Stanford has yet to hit a three-point field goal. And bench points. Washington has come up with an even dozen. It's Stanford's first possession. They scored the last hoop and a half. It was Hernandez on the drive. Both starting fives are back on the floor here. As we get underway. Childress, remember, Saturn with three personal fouls, and there is little getting a touch, but far away from the basket. Lonick struggled on the run, no. And underneath, little battles for his own touch and couldn't put it down. Lonick now one for six in this ball game. Jensen whips it to an open Allen. And that's too many. But it's Washington ball, 25 on the shot clock, and Childress with only two points, and he's been saddled with foul trouble here throughout much of this game. He played only nine minutes of the first half. The three ball, and Jensen can't bury it into Childress's hands. Childress steps out. Coming in from behind on the long rebound, Jones found foul Childress, we see our leading scorer. Stanford, a club that has impressed the entire nation with their poise under pressure this year. Well, the pressure's on a big time right now with 19 to go in Seattle. And that is foul number three on Bobby Jones. So both Childress and Jones saddled with three fouls apiece. There you go, right there. is called on the entry pass. If you're a Stanford fan, you like the fact that they come out of the uh, halftime and go right to the big fella inside. A little late rotate over with Brandon Roy, and Rob Little draws a foul. Almost the whistle blew after they saw Little's reaction when he brought his hand up to his mouth. That's why the negative reaction came from the crowd, and there's Hernandez there as the tough guy again. The first three-point field goal for the Cardinal, and it's 35-28. They're coming again. Stanford may go away. Hernandez will not go away. Well, so far this year, Stanford has not gone away. They've had two miracle finishes, Robinson and Lottick, hitting buzzer beaters. as Childress steps out, and they go again down low, and Jensen, the sophomore, makes a fine play. Headband is Conroy. Ball was knocked out of bounds by Stanford. 
And Mike Montgomery looked at the same stat sheet we did at halftime partner and said, you know what, Rob Lillis, three for three in the first half. We've got to get 42 involved early in the second half. Now the Huskies turn it over. Terrific block from behind of Jensen. They won both ends of the floor in this ball game. Washington has to be careful. They have not put a point on the board yet in the second half. They're allowing Stanford to regroup right here. And Luddick's open from the baseline as he shot through. And bad shooting today by Matt Luddick. Headman now. Conroy tries. Misses the layup. Stanford's basketball. They survive. Here's Childress coming inside Allen. Driving left-hander. And the Cardinals right back within five. Well, remember that sequence right there. There's a steal now by Hernandez. Hernandez will fire the three ball. Jensen, five, little, rejects it. Back to Jensen, ball loose. Hernandez dives, so does Jensen. They tie it up. Possession arrow favors Washington. Washington missed a huge opportunity in transition. One of the few that they've blown in this ball game. Stanford comes down in the link, but Childress takes over. Look at Little throw up that wall, Brent, and that's as well as you can teach a big right there. All deflected out about 17 on that shot. Robinson will dribble out. Huskies are back. Robinson's cut off. Ship it back to Hernandez who tried to settle things down. When all five have touched it for Stanford, they've gotten a good look. Childress back to the basket. Turn around. Not there. Huskies off with it. Jones and traveling is called against Roy on the pass. Well, the New York Times calls it one of the year's top 10 programs. If you haven't seen the practice lately, you have not seen a good show. ABC tomorrow at 10. Trey Simmons checks in for the Huskies. Their 10-point halftime lead has been whittled to five. They haven't scored yet in the second half. And Little now makes this a nine-point Stanford run. Remember, they scored the last two for the first half. They're going to Rob Little, first and second option, until you take it away. Washington needs a basket here badly to stop the bleeding. Stanford knows how to come back in situations like this, Jimmy. Right, look, and they spaced that floor well, take away help. And the help that came was too small. It was 5'9", rotating over on a 6'10", 265-pounder. At the free throw line, Jones. They still haven't scored this half. The vice can tighten directly in front of Montgomery and the Stanford bench. And it'll be Washington starting to feel the heat if they can put this one down. Turned it over. So the three-second violation sends the ball back to the Huskers. Romar has inserted Robinson into the backcourt. And now we've got a break. Romar will attempt to re-energize his underdogs. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. ABC's NCAA Basketball, presented by Cialis, brought to you by L'Oreal Paris, because you're worth it. And MSN, life's better with the butterfly. Come see how at MSN. Stanford rallying, trailing by three. You know, they were down 61-56 by five with 25 seconds remaining on Thursday night. Dan Grunfeld from River Hills, Wisconsin. Hit the three, was fouled, a four-point play down one. Then a five-second violation. They give it back. Loose ball on the floor. Robinson looks for a shot, can't get it. Goes back Lottie. heave at the buzzer. And Stanford stays unbeaten. What a finish. 
Now 35-32. The Huskies still have not scored this half. Remember, against Oregon, Stanford trail by 19 in the second half before rallying to win. Here's against the Cardinal on the inside, away from the ball. Stanford in a 1-3-1 zone. Loddick playing the middle guy. That time got hugged up at the high post area. Picks up the foul. Second personal on Loddick. First team foul against the Cardinal here in the second half. There are two team fouls against Washington. Really a 1-1-3 stack the guard zone is what it is out of Stanford. I think you have to attack the gaps just like that. Simmons comes firing. Of rebound. Allen's got it. Bad pass, and Hernandez was in the lane, but ball out of bounds. And it's going to go over. Take that ball to the corner against that 1 1 3 stack zone, and the, the guards will shoot the passing lanes on you, Brent, and get the turnover. It looked like it was off Hernandez. Hill. A quick look on that replay. I couldn't tell for sure. Childress runs the baseline, jump pass, Little got another one. He's getting touches this half, Jimmy. He's the one guy that Washington can't match up with in the half court. See how high those back guys will come up and cover that zone, but you've got to attack the short corner against this zone. Obviously, it's the high screen, Jones dribble in, Jensen coming to the wing, loses the handle. Terrific job of Little, letting the defense decide where you want to guard me. First of all, he's a screener, then a post. Shows that target hand, does bring the ball down, and Stanford right now, they're zeroed in on pick number 42. Over five minutes of the second half, and the Huskies have not scored against this fierce, fierce Stanford defense. It all starts with a D. And the top-ranked team in the nation is coming back. John Saunders and Digger Phelps, Texas against Kansas State. Jeremiah Massey will do the damage here as Massey squares up. Go down. Yeah, Brandon Mouton didn't have a good game, got it done the other way, but Oklahoma goes down. Also, to Baylor at home. All right, back to you. So, two upsets in the Big 12, and here, Washington dreaming the dream, but they've gone ice cold here in the second half. Robinson steps out high. And a foul is against Stanford. Robinson coming through the lane. Interesting the success that Stanford's had the first five minutes defensively in that 1 1 3 zone. How the timeout they go man, and Washington drives it, attacks the rim on it. Three on Robinson to go along with three on Childress. Jensen. Now Simmons will put it down on Lottick. Inside comes Roy Childress, blocks it, run down by Loddick, and the Cardinal coming again and off a great defensive play. Childress, the three, not this time. And Robinson, wow. Warhol, goes airborne. Off the glass, no. And the Huskies clearly rattled at the offensive end. Rushing shots. First points for Washington here in the second half, and it came at the 13:45 mark. Back door, Childress couldn't get the handle. Knocked out of bounds by, I thought it was Washington, knocked it out. It's Stanford ball, that's a good call. Brent, the smallest starter in the Pac-10 is Nate Robinson at 5'9", and we know he's 5'9", because Lorenzo Romar said he measured him last year. This is a guy that you can lose your lingerie in a hurry when you're trying to defend him one-on-one, -on -one, as explosive as there is in the Pac-10. Inbounds play. Arias steps out. Took Hernandez away that time, too, and he was far away from the basket. 
Now Hernandez comes inside, kick it back out, deflected, shoulders will track it down. Now 10 on the shot. Here's the high pick and roll from Little. Lottick under pressure. Little goes to save it out of bounds, Washington basketball. And a reminder again tomorrow now, 9.30 out here on the Pacific, Mavericks Rockets. Dirk Nowitzki, Yao Ming, and then it's Nets Lakers. Still don't know about Jason Kidd. Kobe Bryant definitely out in that game. Shaquille will be there, of course. You're going to lose Houston in a couple of weeks. I'm going to call and ask you how strong is Yao Ming from the waist down. Yeah, we're really looking forward to seeing him up against Sacramento. Jeff Jones to Simmons. This time, down by Robinson. He's been their leader. Eight, 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 two, eight, 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 Nate Robinson was a defensive back a couple of years ago here in Washington. Helped trigger a football turnaround. He told me before the game he still doesn't know if he's going to return to the football team next fall. But they certainly could use him. He's a talented defensive back. And it's tough for him to operate when he gets to the paint, Brent, when he comes to a two-footed jump stop. He's a one-footed, boom, explosive type guy. Hernandez, Arias, firing. Childress reaches for it, very aggressive, stolen, and Jones is fouled. Lottick committed the personal foul. That's about three possessions in a row that uh, 42 in red has not touched the basketball for Stanford. Washington doing a good job with Rollins, threatening defensively, taking a little out of this game. There are some foul problems mounting. Lottick picking up number three here at the 12 minute mark. Childress is playing, and of course, the time permitting, calling the end of the game of the Seattle's first game of the year. Off the miss shot. Childress on the move, back around. That's his game in an open floor. He can school you. If you don't run every time defensively against Stanford, those three or four times you don't, they'll make you pay. So we've got a timeout. As here in the second half, the number one team has come back. We'll continue after this message and word from our ABC stations. An 11-2 second half advantage for Stanford, and it has started with fierce, fierce defense. Washington, only one of ten from the floor here in the second half, Jimmy, after shooting 42% in the first half. Brent Stanford has kept them off balance. We've seen man-to-man -man out of Stanford in the second half. We've seen a little bit of 2-3 zone and some 1-1-3 stacked zone. Washington right now, quick triggered offensively. Doesn't favor him. Brandon Roy is only one of four from the floor. He is very quiet for the Huskies in this game. Handling in the corner. Puts it down, drives through, comes in on Childress, and he's fouled. He drew number four on Childress with that drive. Brandon Roy is not going to beat you from the three-point area on the floor, but he is outstanding from the two-point area on the floor. Again, this has been the strength of Washington in this ballgame when they've been good. Lower their head, attack the rim, let the quickness take over. It also means that Childress will have to sit for a while. Robinson replaces him. Brandon Roy, a kid that applied for the NBA draft coming out of high school, then withdrew his name. And proper decision for him. Makes the two free throws. 39-36 at the 11 and a half minute mark. Starting to resemble just a little bit what went down in Pullman on Thursday night. On a weave, Hernandez. To the rim. Got it. Right him, huh? There's a lot of guys in the country that can shoot the ball better than Hernandez, but when it comes to toughness, baskets, he's number one. Simmons has it rejected, but Washington. Comes back and Simmons moves out. Nails a three ball. How big is that? A guy that had 50. 
51 points last year in junior college in a game and 50 in another. He comes in for offense. And he's put up 10 here today. Knocked away. Simmons had a hand on it. Out of bounds. Simmons is a good three-point shooter when he can catch and release. You make him put that ball on the floor, especially when he's going to his left. You've done a good job defensively, but I love his height. At 6'5", a very good three-point shooter. Jimmy Dykes, I'm Brian Musburger. A pleasure to have you here in uh, Seattle. This is the last regular season game for Stanford. Looking for an 18-0 record. Trailed at the intermission by 10. And now they are down four with 10.30 left in regulation. Robinson sends it back to Hernandez. A little trying to get free. Allen's staying right on him. They shoot back. There's a shot clock violation. That's no good. Shot clock expired, and uh, Mike can't be happy about that. It was right in front of the Stanford bench. Good Husky defense on that set. The head coach turns around to his assistants and says, Does anyone let our guys know? Stay in the ball game. Stay at the perimeter. Now Simmons tries to penetrate and they've turned it over. Hernandez diving for it. Arias picked it up. Arden will come back down. Try to make it a two or a one point game. Brent Hakeem Rollins doing a terrific job inside of fronting Little. This time he gets called for the foul. Here was Montgomery's reaction on the shot clock violation. Helen Grunfeld, you've got to move. For crying out loud, if Pops can handle a 24-second shot clock, you can handle a 35. Ain't <laughs> that the truth? back on the floor. He's missed his last seven from the field. Robinson smooth, short. Stanford could be just a touch tired after that tough trip. They had some difficulty getting out of Pullman Thursday night. And it goes against the offense. Offensive foul on the charge. Twice in this ballgame, Hernandez has read and anticipated well. This time against Conroy. The defender can still be moving as long as he's established position at that time, Rent. He was still moving side to side. Yeah, that was a uh, back call. He was lateral coming across. Absolutely, Jimmy. Arias steps out at the 9 19 mark. 42 38. Lottick still having trouble. And these shots being just a little short. Lottick is called for the foul. That's number four on him, I believe. This Wednesday and every Wednesday at 10 o'clock, check into Kingdom Hospital. It's being called Brilliant, Gripping, Not a Typical Network Show. An all-new Stephen King's Kingdom Hospital, ABC Wednesday at 10. Confirmed fourth foul on Lottick. Childress watching with four fouls. And so the foul situation now troubling Stanford. And Simmons steps and nails another three. He's been the main man here for the Huskies. Absolutely. Have to, you have to make Simmons dribble into his shot. And Montgomery is going to send a little back into the game at the next opportunity. Robinson left baseline. Jensen wraps it up. Washington legs that look a little bit fresher. Loose, not this time. Harrius picks it up. And I'm just going to go to the rim. Wow. How he about that? Man, is he tough. And he comes up with a turnover. Then he gets his shoulders even with the defender. And his Valentine was bigger than anyone else's on the floor on that play. We got that 14 now for Hernandez. There he is, fronting Rollins. And so Simmons will go again. points for Trey Simmons from Garfield High School. A school that has produced about four of these Husky basketballers. Hernandez back with his three. He responds. Yeah. 
lead is seven. Not this time. Simmons. And foul goes against Roy, I believe, underneath. Nate Robinson checking in. That's the third foul on Brandon Roy. Simmons lighting it up here in Seattle. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. ABC's NCAA Basketball presented by Cialis. Brought to you by Cialis. Ask your doctor if a free sample of Cialis is right for you. Volvo. Volvo for life. And 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. Jimmy, we got a record crowd here today. 10,086. Sean Kemp has just joined him. He's one of the standees. Can't give him any more in the building. Look at number 20, Grunfeld. Brent on the right side of the screen. Now, he's the closest defender in this zone to Trey Simmons. You have to, you have to shade him. Grunfeld gets a foot in the lane in his own defense, and Simmons makes him pay. And again, I like the fact that Simmons is 6'5". Even if you're close, he gets good vision of the rim on the shot. He has scored the last nine Washington points. Hernandez has scored the last seven Stanford points. So right now it is Simmons versus Hernandez. And Hernandez had a lead with Nate Robinson taking a shot at it. See if Stanford goes back to Rob Little, number 42. And just tries to penetrate off the dribble, gets to the right side, wouldn't stay, tap, there is no, and Rollins goes to get it, and a whistle and a foul call. We talked about what Simmons has done in this ball game. Hernandez uh, just beats him in a lot of ways. Again, a guy that usually has five make baskets in a game and five or six assists. He's very efficient with his game, can go either direction and hit it deep from behind that ball screen, and he is the heart and soul of this ball club. First foul against Washington sends the basketball back to the Huskies. Their 10-point halftime lead at five. They seem to have settled down just a little bit thanks to the shooting of Simmons. Vincent can't penetrate on Hernandez, so they stay at the perimeter. Boston Roy. Jensen. First basket of the game for Washington in the zone, attacking the short corner. It's been open a lot in this ball game. Robinson picked up by Roy. Little has it knocked away, and again, Rollins continues to hound number 42. Tuned it over. Well, after this game, of course, on ESPN tonight, it's one of the classics, North Carolina against Duke College Game Day, presented by Wachovia Securities. We'll start it off at 5 Pacific time, then it's Carolina and Duke from Cameron. Lodic on the floor. He's in foul trouble. Childress back on the floor. McCombie going to take a shot with two of his veterans here, saddled with four fouls apiece. Simmons good screen. Simmons goes to the glass. An offensive foul is called. Simmons a little bit out of control. And that's the guy that has been scorching the nets on the catch and shoot. So again, as a defender, you make him put that ball on the floor. He can get a little out of control on you. Big call in this ball game. While well, Childress was out, Washington outscored Stanford 13-7. So Mike knows. Despite the foul trouble, down seven here at the 540 mark. He needs Childress back on the floor. And there he is at the corner. Iron, and that's why. Good call, partner. Rips it in. Yeah. That's eight points for Brandon Roy. Is far away from the basket. Little to screen high handles it. 
Not who you want out there with the ball. Get it back to Hernandez, and Jensen fouled him. Not what you want out there, Jimmy. You try to double up Hernandez when he's in shot position off that ball screen, but not when he's that far out. You'll jump out and extend any time Hernandez can come off and shoot it, but he's not going to be cranking him up from around that timeline. Just, a, you know, a young mistake. You know, he's yep. a sophomore. He'll certainly learn. By the time he's a senior, he won't be jumping out there and doing that. If you're Lorenzo Romar, though, you've got to understand your kids will make some energy effort mistakes in this ballgame today, and that was one of them, but you can live with them. He's just done a fabulous job of turning this team around. Only one senior here today, Allen, on this Washington team. So even if they don't make this spirited run and wind up in the NCAAs, they're going to be a factor in the back 10 next year. Stanford just with two seniors on their lineup as well. Kickball. So they'll reset the shot clock. Took Washington his, out by four, Jimmy. Took his Pepperdine team to the NIT, and then he took his St. Louis squad to the NCAAs in his first year. Was a winner as a player and continued on as a coach. Actually, might have been the UCLA coach, except he left before Jim Herrick was forced out down there. One of Herrick's top assistants on that last Bruin team to win a championship. You know, Brandon Roy was very quiet for much of the game. He let this game come to him, Jimmy, and now he's stepping up big time. Well, a kid that had 30 against UCLA at UCLA, and this is a guy that can jump twice while all the guys are there. That time it paid off for him. The lead is seven. Four and a half minutes. It's over. Boston line. Nate Robinson said before the ball game from Washington, this is the game we've been praying for all year. Matt Loddick followed it up with, be careful what you ask for. Here he comes, firing the three. Short again. He's been short on his shot all game long. Robinson hits Simmons, and Simmons gets Jones a shot. Washington pressures the basketball. Now we're down inside of four minutes. Stanford's unbeaten string on the line now. Roddick will fire the three again. Not this time. Shoulders have a long rebound. And he'll fire the three. Yes! Josh Childress. It's a six at three and a half. Matt Lottick may want to back off just a little bit with his aggressive of shooting that ball. And Jensen steps out. Here's a three. The power forward. That's 13 for Young Jensen. Shoulder swings. Inside. Tap no. And it goes to Washington. It was off Harrius. My friend Jimmy Dykes, the underdog is howling in Seattle. If you're a dog fan in Seattle, right now you're hugging folks you don't even know if you're watching this game at home. To beat Stanford, you got to stretch him defensively. Mike Jensen just stretched him. NCAA committee, pay attention. The Huskies have defeated a number one ranked team only once in 27 tries. You go back to February 22nd, 1979. Lorenzo Romar was a reserve guard on Marv Harshman's team. And that day it was against one of the great UCLA teams coached by John Wooden. Romar with 10 points, six assists, no turnovers in 25 minutes against the top ranked Bruins. And now, could history repeat here against Stanford? Marv Harshman, who coached, well, 14 years in attendance.
And Marv is up there behind the baseline in his familiar seat. What a great job he did out here with the Washington Huskies. And now Stanford picks up the basketball in the backcourt. They're all over Conroy. They've got three minutes to work with here. The miracle workers from Stanford trying to do it one more time. They've done it to Arizona, Washington State. Now they're up against it again. Boy, and don't think Lorenzo Romar didn't talk about that game in the locker room prior to this one. When you're 16 and 10 and you're desperate, fighting for your NCAA life, you bring out every story you can in the book. Both teams huddled up now. Now, Romar, he has been a realist with regards to Washington making the NCAA tournament. We will have done everything we can if we beat Stanford. But that high RPI works against him. He knows that. Done well on the road now. They've won 11 of the last 13. And one of the losses, one of the two losses, was a quality game at North Carolina State. How you finish is important. We just need to keep winning. That's all we can do. They would go from here. They would go down to the Pac-10 tournament next weekend at the Staples. And now my coach question to you, Jimmy. Is he indeed the Pac-10 coach of the year with this brilliant turnaround? Well, I think he'd be the uh, Pac-10 coach of the second half of the year, but unfortunately <laughs> he's against the guy that might be the national coach of the year in Mike Montgomery. You know, that's the truth. Now we're inside of three. Huskies up by nine. Simmons has saved him with his shooting. Roy has been very aggressive in the second half. He penetrates inside, rises up short. Battle for the ball. Don't want to battle each other. Finally, it's Hernandez. Coming across the timeline on Robinson. He's got Childress. Childress fires three. Yes! Here they come again, the miracle workers. I think you stay with Childress and Hernandez down the stretch. He can get little touches when he's in. That's fine. Plenty of time. Knocked away from Robinson. Ball on the floor. Childress can't get it. Still loose. Harrius reaches for it. And it's Washington basketball. Terrific job by Childress to run wide in transition. Almost stepped out of bounds. That's how you teach it. Terrific rotation on the basketball. We talked about the desperate energy that the Washington's played with. Chris Hernandez starting to match it right now. 17 fouls apiece here at the two-minute mark. Roy got it inside, picked up Jones, and it is rejected. And the foul is called on Harrius. Conroy brings the Huskies together for a huddle in, in the lane. Omar knows how important this is now with one of his best athletes, Bobby Jones, out of Compton, California. Went to Long Beach Poly High School. He played with Chandler, the youngster who was drafted in the first round by the Chicago Bulls. But after he left, Jones and his high school team won a state championship. And Jones was Omar's first recruit up here in Seattle. Childress picking it up. A go-to guy for Stanford. When I was uh, never on an undefeated team when I played at Arkansas, but I was on a team that knocked off a 16-0 North Carolina team. It's amazing how much energy and passion you have in a ball game like this. No Childress. one for Washington's tired. Long three, and there he is again. Robinson. Jensen to run some time. Down to 145. Now the Huskies need to be smart. Hernandez battling Robinson Fowler. Everything right now is working Washington for it. Montgomery wants to briefly talk about it over here. Cardinal benches up. Now let's take you back to the start of the day. I think Montgomery knew just how tough this was going to be. Romar coming over with a big smile. Early on, it was a battle with the referees. And then upset with his players at times here today. It is so hard. No team in Pac-10 history since they expanded the conference has been able to go 18-0. And they were, they were sitting on that bubble here today. 
And uh, one final reminder now that tomorrow at 9.30, great NBA, Mavericks, Rockets. That'll be followed by the Nets and the Lakers here on ABC. Then tomorrow night at 4.30 Pacific time on ESPN, you'll see Minnesota hosting the red-hot Boston Celtics. Can the Celtics keep it going? They've won four in a row. Even with a loss today, I don't think there's any way you can jerk a number one seed from the hands of Stanford. Oh, I absolutely agree. Robinson, what they have really missed, Justin Davis in this ball game. He had 17 and 13 in the first matchup. Solid points. I mean, he's over there in uniform. He worked yesterday in practice. I watched him. They're hoping to get back in the tournament. The Cardinal coming back now. Down seven a minute and a half. Hernandez. Childress. Hernandez will fire a deep three. No. And it's Cardinal ball, 123. Well, if there's a team in the country that can come back from this deficit, you're looking at him. You're looking at him. One of the miracle workers lost it this time. Out of bounds. It has been a struggle, and it began Thursday night. There was snow, tough trip out of that airport. They had to wait four or five hours. They didn't get into Seattle until 2 o'clock. They had a late start to their practice yesterday. They called off the morning shoot-around. You could understand if this is a tired basketball team being emotionally drained. But many experts have said that it might help Stanford and the NCAAs if they would lose one game before the season ends. Now, Montgomery and the players were buying none of that. But you as armchair experts and us up here, we tend to agree with that. That takes a little bit of pressure off the team, doesn't it, Jimmy? Well, if you're a Stanford fan, that's exactly what you're buying into right now. That corner power out there. And I'll tell you what, this club has all the makings to still go deep in March. They've got the depth, they've got the uh, shooters. Lodic has been off today. They've got the size, and they can play a style that wins on a neutral floor. Davis back. I think they can win the whole thing. Yep. This is far from a neutral floor today, partners. <laughs> I mean, the doghouse is out. Arias comes open at the free throw line. Goes after the miss. Puts it back up. No. Seconds ticking away. Now down to 107. Hernandez and... Lodic jumped in and a foul is called. And Lodic fouls out. Well, we go back to February 7th against Arizona. The running 35 footer by Nick Robinson. And the unbeaten season is safe. Then, Thursday night, ball on the floor. Into Robinson again. Back down to Lodic. Grip it and rip it. And they stay unbeaten, but now this one will be even tougher. Like found out one of eleven indicating just how tired he has been here today. Many of his shots were short. They may have used up their allotment of good, clean living coupons for the year. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. One of the great surges, though, going down here in Seattle by the Washington Huskies. This is a team that is going to make the committee think. Final minute, Childress with an offensive rebound. Nice pass to Robinson. Now 55.8 and timeout. We're going to tell you the other thing that will make folks think if you're an Arizona fan right now, I know what RPI and strength of schedule SOS means, but CSI, Common Sense Index, is also going to show Washington beat Arizona twice head to head. That has to speak volumes. As a football guy, Jimmy, I find a lot of similarity between the RPI and the BCS. BCS. <laughs> And a lot of those fellas that they say have got a pretty good RPI would come out here to Seattle, and I'm telling you right now, they'd be underdogs. Believe it. Those guys who make numbers, you ought to listen to them, too. They know where talent is. That's a business. A game that this Washington campus has been starved for for about three weeks now. Again, Nate Robinson said, I've been praying for this opportunity for the last two or three weeks. I talked to him before the ball game. He said... 
I got a strong hunch. My prayer is about to get answered. This could be one of the big upsets of the season here in Washington. And remember, this team, this Husky team, started out 0 and 5. They have won 11 of their last 12 Pac-10 games. Unbelievable how they have come down the stretch. And this is what you want to encourage. This is what you want. The Nielsen sets turned on in the upper northwest. You want Seattle. Chicago so happy to have DePaul in. It would light up the television sets in Seattle if the Huskies make it. Another set of numbers that are worth thinking about. Don't think for a second that might not factor in. free throw Jimmy and now we are closing in inside of a minute it's a 10 Stanford will look long ball if they can get it if not glide for the two and Robinson does giving him a life now Robinson will come up to shoot you know what though I think as competitive as Nate Robinson is he's the type of kid as soon as he got fouled his first thought Brent was you just fouled the wrong dude yep. that's a confident competitive guy right there you know, Jimmy, his high school, Rainier Beach tonight, going for three state championships in a row from the uh, Tacoma Dome. So that'll be an interesting story. I believe they play OJ High School. Both those teams, I think, won their semifinal games yesterday. And there's Cox. From a great winning back here at Washington. The legendary coach, Marv Harshman, in the stands. A little frosty now. The upset is at hand. 43 seconds. Stanford looking for another miracle run. They'll go in for Hernandez. He got it quickly. And now they foul. There he is. So put Roy on that free throw line. And that will be the strategy now. Sitting on an eight. They can still do it. Believe me. Anybody who's watched this team knows full well Lomar and his staff over there. They certainly know it. Ken Bone, Cameron Dollar, and Russ Shaney, the assistants. Got to say about Cameron Dollar, first time I had a chance to watch the former great UCLA guard run a practice yesterday. Someday, Cameron Dollar is going to be a head coach, folks. You pay attention to that young man. He knew exactly what he was doing out there yesterday, Jimmy. He did a great job of breaking Stanford down in practice. Got him down to a team, didn't he? He sure did. Lorenzo doesn't want to lose that guy anytime soon. Bad pass. It's turned over. Big mistake with 33 seconds to go in the lead at nine. Wow. Well, they'll put the point guard on the line. You know what, Stanford did a better job in the second half of taking care of the basketball, but again, way too many turnovers on the road when you know you're going to get the other team's best shot. Washington has matched Stanford's comeback energy and then took it to another level himself. So the second player fouls out. Lodick is joined by Robinson. Well, one thing you can say about Montgomery and Stanford from interviewing the youngsters again. It's such a class operation. But it is so tough, even for a great team, to go unbeaten throughout the entire season. And what this does, they will, uh, they will really stick in the gut of Stanford. I know they'll be 26 and 1, but they'll hate it. And Andy's missing. Childress comes back. Now Grunfeld's turn. Arias finally. 18 ticks of the clock left. 71-62 off the steal. No. Conroy coming up to the free throw line now. 13 seconds to go. And now, let's take a look at our key moment, Jimmy. Presented by Cialis. They were struggling early in the second half. And uh, Stanford allowed Trey Simmons to catch and shoot. Scouting report tells you he's a 6'5 marksman. Make you put it on the floor, and that was a real key in this ball game. And I can tell you this, all heck is getting ready to break loose in the heck head. I'm happy we're up a little yeah. bit high here. 
There will be some scene here. That was the halftime score. Then a spirited Stanford rally brought them right back in it. And uh, <laughs> Jones has got his... He wants to record the moment, folks. Well, that's a veteran move right there out of a sophomore, huh? Allen leaving the floor for the last time, probably. He's the only senior on this Husky team. Five Washington players in double figures here today. And, and it is time, Jimmy, for the underdog to start howling. Down to 10 seconds now. The three off iron. Robinson running out. Now he'll bring seconds off. He's beyond the free throw line. Stanford out of sync all day, and Washington had a whole lot to do with it. There's a party going on right here. And all those experts back on the East Coast who said, there's no way Washington can make it. I mean, that RPI is so bad. I mean, what are you people doing? Uh, give me a break. This team deserves keen consideration for one of the 65 spots. They are about to hand Stanford its first defeat of the season. They are about to make Stanford the top-ranked team in the nation. 26 and 1. They have beaten Arizona twice. They went to North Carolina State League and played the Wolfpack right down to the wire before losing. This team is a quality team deserving of an NCAA tournament bid. Washington celebrates its upset of the number one team in the nation. A magical run by Stanford. Just ran into a purple wall. Terrific effort by the Huskies. And the underdog is Howland in the Northwest. Once again, the final score, 75-62. ABC Sports Online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. Join ABC tonight at 8 o'clock for the ABC Saturday Movie of the Week. Frequency for Jimmy Dykes and the rest of our ABC crew. I'm Brett Musburger saying so long from Seattle. This is ABC Sports Championship Television. and Duke, this is the most passionate rivalry in all of college basketball. Duke, North Carolina.